All right, to install the bottom bracket and the cranks, you're gonna need um, some of the same tools that we used before, but uh, obviously some, some gloves. Um, we have our race face crank and chain ring, narrow wide chain ring. The chain ring, this is a cinch system, so the chain ring has actually already been installed to the drive side crank. The other side with the preload adjuster and we have a whole, some, some pedal washers and we have some spacers in here. And most importantly, the installation instructions. These are really good actually visually because they tell you what to use depending on what the width of your bottom bracket is. And we'll need grease for sure. Again, I'm using the Triflow, Triflow Synthetic Waterproof Grease. Going to need a torque wrench with, uh, for, in my case, this is a, an eight millimeter hex key. Um, and that is what uh, cinches down the cranks on this particular race face cinch. I like the race face cinch because they have this huge 30 millimeter Look how big that uh, the axle is on that crank. You're also going to need your bottom bracket. Uh, be careful here. You don't. They have the the dust wipers to seal out the dust on both sides. You don't want to lose those. And it's got some spacers here. And depending on the diagram, the install diagram, uh, we may or may not use those. So if you look at. The installation diagram here it does a good job of kind of pointing out where the washers go if you have a 68 83 millimeter bottom bracket versus a 73 we have a 73 so there is no spacer on the non-drive side and there's no spacer on the drive side there so we will only use this spacer here so one spacer on the drive side and we should be good to go and it gives all your torque specs on here too so we will follow all of that. And again, some alcohol to clean out the inside of the bottom bracket and some shop tiles. Okay, I'm gonna start as usual with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel. And I'm just gonna go inside the bottom bracket shell here and make sure there's nothing. And do that on both sides to make sure there's nothing kind of unexpected in there. Um, so one side is, is the uh, clockwise to tighten. This side is actually counterclockwise to tighten. So you need to be careful there. So let's do that. I'm gonna put my glove back on. grease to go inside the threads here all right so you can see on here race face labels um, it says tighten drive side turn this way um, so what I'll do is I'll go through uh, grease the other side and we'll stick this tube through and then screw the, uh, the bottom bracket on apply grease to the drive side as well. So now I want to grease the threads of the, and this is just a uh, kind of a tube, a hollow tube that keeps the, uh, the crank axle protected uh, inside the bottom bracket. So I'm just going to remove this for now um, while I grease the threads on this bottom bracket on the non-drive side. So I've got some grease here. I'm just going to apply that, put my comb back in, and then I'll insert. And we can see from the arrow that in order to tighten this side, we need to go clockwise. And remember, on the non-drive side, no spacer. But on the drive side, we have a spacer. So let me go ahead and... Let's grease the drive side. Apply some grease around the thread. 
it. They're already pre-locked tight. Don't forget the spacer on the drive side. So we have to add one spacer for a 73 uh, millimeter. So I'll put that spacer on my unit there and we'll start turning that. We've got those started. I'm gonna move my glove, wipe my hand just a little bit. Now the key to the race face bottom bracket installation is they have their special tool uh, that fits around these uh, cups in order to tighten them down. That tool looks something like this and it just fits on the end of the, a socket wrench. And so you put that tool over and you're able to, to actually tighten down. So I'll hand tighten that a little bit, go around to the other side and hand tighten but remember we're going the opposite way and we'll get our torque wrench spin this in a little bit and once you start to feel it tighten down a little bit stop and do the other side and then we can gauge come back and tighten them down all the way so put it over the cup and we'll just continue to turn and this is the reason I love threaded bottom brackets especially the 73 millimeter one um, See how easy it is to change out bottom bracket? The bottom bracket actually has the bearings so the crank sits in there and spins on those bearings. All right, so then we're gonna torque these down and remember the sheet says, on the, uh, so on the non-drive side, we want 34 to 41 Newton meters. So 34 to 41. So let's get this one taken care of. 40. Alright. Yeah, let's do the same. This side, the non-drive side. And let's see if we can. There's 40. Wipe a little bit of the excess off. On both sides. It's definitely a point where you will attract a lot of dust. A lot of dust. Put our dust caps on and they go right in here. I'll probably just put it on the crank. So if we do everything right, it says we must make sure we have the preload adjuster on. We have that. Need to make sure we've got all the appropriate spacers on our bottom bracket we did that part and then we can insert our crank set tighten it down torque it and then adjust our preload for the bearing and tighten up the nylon preload adjuster so um, let's do that so here's our non-drive side and what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna slip the end cap for the bearing, dust end cap, over the crank itself. And be careful to note the uh, lip on it. And it should be pointing in. All right. And we can just spin that down. And we'll get it all the way to our nylon preload adjuster and then we can actually insert this through our bottom bracket. This will take a little bit of pressure and we'll get it all the way in and then we'll go around to the other side and put our, uh, our bearing dust cover on and step number four is torque down the eight millimeter to 50 newton meters of torque. We've got to do that. 
Okay, I have spun the bike around, and so the next step is to install the drive side crank and tighten it down, torque it to the correct spec. So we will grab our, the way these race face uh, cranks work is there's a, a hex bolt built in that uh, that turns the, uh, the threads into the, the crank here. So this has already been greased and um, you can see some grease here in, in the threads as well. So we will tighten that down and obviously you want it the opposite of where the other crank is. So we'll just do give it a hand tighten for now. Torque down of 50 newton meters. So we'll put our torque wrench on here and we'll just hold. And that's 50. And at this point, it says give it a light tap to seat the crank. And you want to make sure you've got all your spacers and stuff. There shouldn't be any. Play. Give a, a gentle tap. Just go back and make sure we've got the proper torque again. All right. And then we need to adjust our preload. So let's do that on the non-drive side. All right, we have turned the bike around, and so now what we want to do is we want to set this preload adjuster. This nylon adjuster is on threads on the crank, and uh, when you install it, you have it all the way out, and then when you put it on, you want to thread it toward the bearing to tighten it up and put some preload on the bearing, and get it hand tight, basically, and then you just want to cinch it down with this screw here, tight enough so it doesn't move. Be careful not to over tighten this thing because these are so give that a nice turn to make sure it doesn't move. And then once we're at that point, you really want to check the cranks and make sure there's no play in them and that they move freely. And they do. And the one thing about these uh, the race face cranks, that tube in the inside, it'll make it feel like there's a little bit of uh, tension in there in the beginning and it will go away over time uh, some people don't even run that tube they take it out but i tend to run it so yeah so that's our crank install and if we had some pedals i might have an extra set around here i'll have to put the pedals on these do have a thread in direction and they also um, have a proper side there is a serial number stamped onto this and it has an L at the end. That means it belongs on the left side and the way these pedals screw in. And make sure you have your, your pedal washer on as well. The easiest way to remember, so this is our left or non-drive side. These actually tighten from the back. Uh, the easy way to remember is you tighten it toward the front. You wanna spin it toward your front wheel to tighten it and I'm not gonna put much pressure on there. And the other side is the opposite. So uh, for the drive side, remember I want to spin it toward the front tire. And that's what I'll do to get it started here. And you can also look at the thread pitch on these things to, to uh, determine that as well. So. All right, so now I have some pedals on. Yes, I'm not going to go with blue pedals but I need something to put my feet on just to do some, some test. So just remember that when you're pedaling, it always wants to continually tighten versus loosen, and that ensures that the pedals will never uh, reverse thread itself off. 